Now I'm going to use a demo available in MATLAB to describe some of the issues in implementing and sim simulating a root raised cosine filter. So if you go into the MATLAB command for demonstrations and you go into the section on communications toolbox and choose the physical layer and then the filtering choice, uh, you'll be able to come down here to the uh, raised cosine filtering example that I'll be showing you. So here is the script that you will open up in this demonstration that takes you through raised cosine filter and it shows you some of the uh, implementation issues. There are a couple of commands that you need to know. Rand i, i for integer generates the bits randomly, and then you call the com communications raise cosine transmit filter. And then you can specify the roll off and the delay that you're going to be introducing. And in this, you can also generate a root raise cosine filter, not just the raise cosine. And then the final command of step means to actually generate the filter which is specified in the first command. So, uh, one of the things we have to specify is the span of the uh, raised cosine um, signal. The raised cosine, by, by, uh, in theory, is infinite time, from minus infinity to infinity, but of course we have to truncate it and we have to limit it to a certain number of symbols. So this is the number of symbols that will be uh, used to represent the raised cosine. In this case, it's six symbol intervals uh, which are being used. So if here are symbol logic one, logic one, uh, logic one, you know, that could be a random uh, set of si signals, uh, symbols that is being sent in with a separation between them of the bit interval. When it goes through this uh, low pass filter, uh, when we specified six, that means that the, uh, instead of being infinite, there will only be six symbols, uh, intervals here that will be supported in this um, uh, simulate um, this embodiment of the raised cosine filter. So that means that essentially we're truncating um, after four lobes. So two lobes either side of the main lobe are, are capped and all the rest of the definition is, is actually sent to zero. So it's not exactly a raised cosine pulse, uh, but it is still a Nyquist pulse. That means that we are introducing a delay of three bit intervals because uh, if I look at the time when this uh, bit zero enters into the system, it's actually coming out at time three uh, by the time it's been delayed by waiting to be uh, give it a two preceding side lobes uh, before the main lobe. So uh, the next thing we have to specify is how much oversampling we're doing in order to actually achieve the shape of the curve. Because it's not continuous time in MATLAB, so it's not a continuous time curve. We have to specify how many samples we're going to do. And in this case, the oversampling rate in this demonstration is 8. So here I have uh, the pulse uh, shape, the filter shape that is used for um, generating this uh, 6 support. So each shade of blue here uh, shows a different um, uh, symbol interval. And if we look at the last symbol interval here, I, I can point out for you uh, that there are indeed eight samples in this symbol interval. And in each one of the other symbols intervals, there's also eight samples. So that represents the oversampling. And with this oversampling, of course, we get a good representation of the shape. Now, in red here, I show the delay of three, so um, you have three symbols uh, plus sort of a half a symbol <laughs> to get the, the peak uh, value of the um, raised cosine shape, which represents when the receiver should be doing its sampling. So this would be a sequence, what would come out, and remember there's this startup process, so you really should wait until you get into uh, uh, after six assembled intervals into sort of the steady state uh, and you get usable interval. And don't worry about these first ones. For instance, if you're going to generate an eye diagram, you should not include these because they're transients. They don't represent really what's going on in the steady state. So if we looked at the uh, input to our filter, um, like here we have a logical one, logical zero, logical one, and interior to the filter, it starts like that, but then it is oversampled, and what comes out of the filter 
uh, is actually the oversampled rate. So uh, don't be surprised that the size of your vectors changes uh, when you go through the filter. So for instance in the demo they'll be showing you if you use the raised cosine cho choice uh, what it would look like at the receiver filter at the sampling times, what were the values that would be seen, and we can see here that the one value is exactly at the sampling time, so this is I think a noise-free case. So uh, as I mentioned you can use the square root uh, command uh, option to generate a root raised cosine, and this would be a plot of a root raised cosine uh, waveform. So you might be tempted to look at two equivalent implementations in MATLAB, one which is separating the filter into the transmit side raise cosine, root raise cosine filter, and the receiver side root raise cosine filter, or an equivalent one where you have a simple raise cosine filter uh, which represents the two. That's fine in terms of the filter response, but you have to be careful in your treatment of noise. So MATLAB has this signal uh, additive white Gaussian noise command, which is very convenient for adding um, on the noise. So you start with your signal with no noise, you specify the signal to noise ratio in dB, and uh, it'll happen. So the correct way to use this command is to use this command at the intermediate point here. So you shape it, you transmit it, then it's corrupted by additive white Gaussian noise, and your receiver uh, uses a match filter to limit the effect of that AWGN. So if you're going to um, use the two filter approach, this is the right way to do it. First filter, raise cosine, added white Gaussian noise, and then second one. Then we can um, sample it and uh, if we were in that MATLAB demo, it would be a stem command used to plot the results. Now if you are trying to do the equivalent and you added your additive white Gaussian noise after combining these two into a single root raised cosine filter, it, you would not get the correct um, effect of noise. And the easiest way to see that is to use a, an eye diagram. For instance, instead of doing a sample and a stem plot, you can do a plot eye diagram on the output there, and they'll give you different results in these two different simulations. Because in the, this is the kind of eye diagram we expect to see, However, in the second case, you get something that is much more noisy, and that is because this noise is infinite bandwidth and is never uh, downsample, uh, limited by the filtering process. So if you want to use this approach, you have to modify um, the, the noise. You have to actually filter it before you add it. So be careful, and uh, be careful to avoid this situation.